Now, sales variances can also arise from external factors that are not controllable. So, for example, you can see there might be changes in sales volume because of general changes in the economy. And that's obviously not under the control of the company. So if you have a situation like this, it might be useful to compare the actual market share with the target market share. And in order to do this, we need to split the sales volume variance into a market size and a market share variance. Let's go and have a look at an example. Sydney PTY Limited sells a single product. Budgeted sales are 36,000 units. The standard profit per unit is 12 Rand, and the total budgeted market size is 360,000 units. So up front, we can calculate their target market share. The total market size is expected to be 360,000 units, and they expect to sell 36,000 units. So they expect to have 10% of the market. That is their target market share. So the other 90% is obviously sitting with the competition. We then have actual information. Actual sales are 40,000 units, and the total actual market size is 500,000 units. So first we are going to calculate the sales volume variance. So how do we calculate our sales variances? You always start with the actual information first. If we are calculating the sales price variance, you keep the quantity the same and you change the price. That will give us the price variance. Then if we are calculating the volume variance, you keep the price the same and you just change the quantity. Now remember, the sales price variance is always calculated using selling prices. We compare the actual selling price per unit to the standard selling price per unit, and that's how we calculate the price variance. On the other hand, the volume variance can either be calculated using standard selling prices, or the standard contribution per unit, or the standard profit per unit. Now, if you look at the information that we've been provided with in this question, the only information that we have is the standard profit per unit. We don't have the standard selling price per unit. We don't have standard contribution per unit. So what does this tell me? This is a bit of revision from the sales variances that we looked at previously. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you must go back to the sales variances and make sure that you understand this. Remember, if we are going to be reconciling budgeted sales to actual sales, then when you calculate the volume variance, you should use selling prices in your calculation. On the other hand, if we are going to be reconciling budgeted profit to actual profit, then when you calculate the volume variance, you should either use the standard contribution per unit or the standard profit per unit in your calculation. Now, in this example, we already said the only information we have is the standard profit per unit. So we are obviously going to use the standard profit per unit. That's all we have. But if we are using the standard profit per unit, that tells me two things. It tells me that we are calculating these variances so that we can reconcile profits in order to reconcile the budgeted profit to the actual profit. Because if we are reconciling profits, we use standard contribution per unit or standard profit per unit. And the reason why we are using the standard profit per unit in this example is obviously because the company uses absorption costing. Because remember, if the company uses variable costing instead of absorption costing, then we won't use the standard profit per unit, but instead we'll use the standard contribution per unit. All right, so like I said, make sure you're happy with what I've said. If you are not happy, go back to the sales variances and make sure that you're happy with this logic. So let's calculate the sales volume variance. The standard price is going to be the standard profit per unit, which is 12 Rand. We are comparing the actual quantity sold to the budgeted quantity. 
They actually sold 40,000 units, and they budgeted to sell 36,000 units. So because they actually sold more than what they budgeted to sell, this variance is going to be favorable. Now, in this example, you've been given the total budgeted market size and also the total actual market size which means it's possible for us to split the sales volume variance into a market size variance and a market share variance. Let's first look at the calculation of the market size variance. We can see that the total market size is much higher than they originally expected. They thought that the total market size would be 360,000 units and it's actually 500,000 units. So, in order to calculate the market size variance, we can see that the total market size has increased by 140,000 units. So this variance is going to be favorable because the actual market size is bigger than the budgeted market size. So you'll see at the end this variance is favorable. Now, we calculated up front that Sydney PTY Limited expects to have 10% of the market. So if the total market size increases by 140,000 units, then Sydney's sales should increase by 14,000 units. 10% of the total market size increase because they expect to have 10% of the market. So you can see in order to calculate the market size variance, we take the 14,000 units that we calculated above, and we want this variance in RAND values. So to get the RAND value of the variance, so that we don't just have a variance in units, we need to multiply by the standard profit per unit, the 12 RAND per unit. All right, so that gives you the market size variance. Now, it's important to note this market size variance is not controllable by the company. They don't have any control over the total market size. The fact that the total market size increased from 360,000 units to 500,000 units is not under their control. They can't control the total market size. That's obviously as a result of changes in the economy, changes in the demand for the product, etc. That is not controllable. However, their market share is controllable. And in order to calculate the market share variance, we know that their target market share is 10%. So if the actual market size is 500,000 units, they should have sold 50,000 units. You can see the calculation just below. Their target market share is 10%, so if the actual market size is 500,000 units, Sydney sales should be 50,000 units obviously 10% of the total market size. However, we know that the actual sales were not 50,000 units. They were only 40,000 units. So they've lost market share. They only sold 40,000 units. So this variance is going to be unfavorable because they actually sold 10,000 units less than what they should have sold. They should have sold 50,000 units and they only sold 40,000 units. So this variance is going to be unfavorable. It's an unfavorable variance of 10,000 units. They sold 10,000 units less than what they should have. Now, we don't want this market share variance in units. We want the market share variance in rands. So once again, you need to multiply by the standard profit per unit in order to get this variance in rands. Then if you add together the market size variance and the market share variance, that ties into the total sales volume variance that we calculated up front. Now, I want you to assume we are trying to analyze the performance of the sales manager to determine whether or not he should be paid a bonus. If we just look at the sales volume variance in total, we are going to say, yes, the sales manager should be paid a bonus because he actually sold more than what we budgeted to sell. So that indicates positive performance. However, the problem that we have in this example is the total market size increased. So obviously, if the total market size increases, the company should be able to sell more units. And the problem that we identified 
when we split the sales volume variance into a market size and a market share variance, is the company hasn't maintained their market share. They budgeted to have a market share of 10%, but we can see they actually only sold 40,000 units of the total 500,000. So the actual market share is only 8%. It's not 10%. So they've lost market share. So the fact that the market is bigger is obviously favorable because they should be able to sell more products. So that's favorable. But that is not under the control of the sales manager. The market share variance is, however, under his control. And the fact that they lost market share they should have sold 50,000 units and they only sold 40,000 units. Or another way to look at it is the target market share was 10% and the actual market share was only 8%. They lost market share. So this shows negative performance on the part of the sales manager who failed to take advantage of the increased market size. So as a result of these calculations, the sales manager should not be paid a bonus.